Hello friends, welcome again to Philippians, Paul's letter from lockdown. Let's read from chapter 2 and verse 25. I think it is necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker and fellow soldier, who is also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you and is distressed because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill and almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not only on him, but also on me, to spare me sorrow upon sorrow. Therefore, I'm all the more eager to send him, so that when you see him again, you may be glad and I may have less anxiety. So then, welcome him in the Lord with great joy, and honour people like him, because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life to make up for the help you yourselves could not give me. Of all the people mentioned in the pages of the New Testament, few are more honoured than this man Epaphroditus. And yet he wasn't an apostle or an outstanding Christian leader. He was just an ordinary church member. He belonged to the church at Philippi and they sent him on a mission to the Apostle Paul with a gift from the church. And they asked him to stay and help Paul in any way that he could while Paul was in prison. Now that was a risky assignment. I don't think there would have been too many volunteers for a journey of several weeks that culminated in associating with someone who was facing a possible death sentence. Uh, Epaphroditus, we are told, almost lost his life. But it wasn't in the way that he might have anticipated. It wasn't anything very glamorous. He just became ill. So ill that, as Paul says, he almost died for the service of Christ. There's an echo there of what Paul has written earlier in Philippians chapter 2 about Jesus, who was obedient even to the point of death. And just as Jesus was willing to lay down his life, so Epaphroditus also was willing to risk his life for the service of Christ. In fact, Paul says that even when Epaphroditus was so ill, his first concern was still for other people. No wonder then that Paul pins a bunch of medals on this man Epaphroditus. Verse 25, he labels him as my brother, my co-worker, my fellow soldier, your messenger, my carer. Five medals that he pins on this man's chest. And yet it wasn't that Epaphroditus was naturally heroic. He was just being a faithful Christian. I love the, the realism of the Bible in describing this scene. This man was not only ill, but we're told in verse 26, he was homesick at such a time as that. You see, the Bible recognizes that I can be all the good things Paul mentions in verse 25. I can be that co-worker, that fellow soldier. I can be all those good things and yet still be somebody who is physically ill, who is homesick, who is lonely, who is depressed. You see, the Christian life is not so much about being excused from pain as it is about finding God's grace in our weakness. It's in the valley of suffering and sacrifice that we best learn how to be like Christ. Now, not everybody recognizes that. There are some very foolish Christians. God bless them. We must love them. But they exist. Maybe some of them existed in the church at Philippi. I don't know. But perhaps that's why Paul felt he needed to give Epaphroditus such a glowing reference. It's as though he's saying, as he sends Epaphroditus back to this church at Philippi, look, brothers and sisters, don't think that your brother Epaphroditus is some kind of quitter, or as though he's, he's chickened out. It's got nothing to do with that, says Paul. He's not running away. I'm sending him back. And verse 29, you should honour people like him, because he risked his life for Christ. The person who has persevered in some service for God, which in the eyes of this world looks a failure, that may be the person who can best show us 
what it is to be like Jesus. Now, do you see why it was that Epaphroditus was considered worthy of such a mention in the New Testament? It's because he was just like us, but he was also like Christ. He was like us in our weakness, but like Christ in his willingness to give up his own safety, his own comfort for the sake of others. And that, you see, is what the Christian life is. People like us becoming like Jesus. It isn't rocket science, but every time it takes a miracle of God's grace to make it happen. Let's pray for that now. Thank you, Father, for the encouragement of seeing how Epaphroditus, someone like us, became like Jesus. By your Spirit, make that happen in our lives too, for your glory's sake. Amen. God bless you, dear friends. Bye for now.